Wild Sun Rescue Centre is nestled in the quaint town of Cabulla in Costa Rica. It aims to bring biodiversity back into the Nicoya Peninsula. The primary issues that the rescue centre deals with are animals that have been harmed by uninsulated power lines, deforestation of rainforests for the promotion of farmland and agriculture, and illegal capture and trade of wildlife for pets. So I would say Wild Sun Rescue Center has the objective to restore nature in the Nicoya Peninsula. Um, and we have a rescue center part which uh, rehabilitates and releases wildlife when it gets into trouble. Usually it's because of humans, uh, like the electrocution, bad attacks, car accidents, stuff like that. But another important part is to bring species back uh, that were extirpated from their range because of humans. Here in the Nicoya Peninsula, like habitat destruction caused uh, macaws to completely disappear from this peninsula. Next to that, the macaws, because they're so beautiful, um, they were being traded illegally as pets, kept as pets, but also traded as pets. And Wild Sun has taken on the reintroduction project to bring species back uh, that were extirpated from their range because of humans. As the second release site, we received our first breeding pairs of macaws uh, in February last year. Our first release was in July uh, last year. We released 10 uh, young birds. Uh, part of them were still from the first release site and part of them were bred here. Six of them are still in the area. Uh, we kind of want them to stick around for a little bit to get to know the area and to grow older and experience what it's like to live in the wild before they disperse. Uh, but a couple of them decided to, to fly out and there have been sightings up to Malpais, which in, is on the other side of the peninsula, um, that were uh, birds that were released here. So they're doing quite well. I actually do think that if we, if we didn't intervene, the macaw would have gone extinct. Collar monkeys are really common here in Costa Rica and they live mostly arboreal, which means that most of their lives are spent up high in the trees eating leaves. But because there is so many roads being built and buildings being uh, built, it fragments their habitat, which means that not only is it hard for them to reach certain parts of habitat where food is, but also they have to somehow cross the road. Um, and often that's using uninsulated power lines, which are not safe to touch. Uh, and because howler monkeys are really amazing, they have this really strong fifth limb, which is their tail. They use that to cross between trees, and so when they're crossing between a tree and a power line, they're unfortunately a lot of times electrocuted. A few days ago on Monday, we got a call on the rescue phone for an electrocuted howler monkey. Arrived and there were no people at the scene. I started looking around and I looked up and there was a young uh, monkey hanging from the wire that was actually being electrocuted. As I was looking at it, I could hear it. Um, and it, because the um, nerves and the hand was burned and damaged, it couldn't let go of the wire, so it was just kind of stuck there. Um, I looked on the ground and there was a mother, uh, a, an adult howler monkey that had a tiny baby on her stomach, and um, the baby's mouth was bleeding, so um, I think the fall would have hurt the baby, usually they don't take the shot. And then there was another baby on the ground just alone next to them um, that didn't have any injuries but was not moving or anything. So um, by that time I found all of them, I put the mother in the kennel with her baby, um, I wrapped up the other baby in a blanket and was holding her, and the people came out and told me that, that none of those monkeys were the ones that they had called for, so that all happened since they called me and since I was driving, um, and they brought out the, the monkey that they had called for, which was a juvenile. Um, so. 
kind of like a teenager in our age, I guess. And um, she, her tail was pretty badly burned, um, and she wasn't moving very much either. So I couldn't carry them all back because I only had one kennel, um, and I had decided that I'd take the baby um, that was alone in my arm, in my arms. And the people were nice that they didn't have a car, so they bought a taxi there and back to bring uh, the monkey they had called for originally. And also, um, after I had left, the monkey that was on the wire actually was able to, to release and fall. So they brought both of them in. Um, on my journey back on the quad, um, obviously it's super stressful for the baby and the mom in the back. Because it's bumpy and they're in a kennel and they've got injuries that are probably painful for the ride and about halfway back um, the baby that I was holding I could feel her breathing really heavy and I kind of slowed down to see what's going on and while I was slowing down she started um, well blood just started pouring out of her mouth like a lot and so I pulled over um, I've never seen that before so I was trying to basically stop her from choking on it, um, but it obviously was some terrible internal injury that I wouldn't have been able to, to help her. Um, I don't know if we could have helped her at all with any of the equipment we have or medication anyway. Um, and she was struggling to breathe, so I was trying to resuscitate her, but she she died while, while I was trying to get back. So um, that was probably the worst part of the whole day was that because it was just so terrible and obviously a super slow way and painful way for a baby monkey to die unnecessarily, I guess. I think the problem with the electrocutions is it's because it costs money to fix so many um, and there are so many unsafe ones that are running through howler monkey habitat that it's such a big issue that it's hard to know where to start, I think. So you can insulate a power line here, a power line there, but it's still such a huge problem around the country. We need a lot of support, um, and that comes from people at home. They can support us by following what we're doing. Um, making a donation is really helpful. It allows us to increase our capacity, so we can either hire more people to, to basically just focus on this problem, uh, or we can sort of increase um, the amount of capacity we have to rescue the monkeys. So um, just support and donations are, are really helpful and it allows us to sort of come together and, um, and really show them that this is a problem that a lot of people are behind um, so that we can sort of make change permanently rather than just solving this solution of tuning the monkeys that are coming in so often. If you would like to support Wild Sun Rescue Centre, then you can do so by visiting their website at www.wildsunrescue.org.